Hi folks, this is all the fruit. It's mid-November and I'm in a neighborhood in my city of Heidelberg in Germany. And I want to see what types of fruits I can forage in this neighborhood in mid-November. This used to be a factory in the 20th century. You can see here and there there are some remnants of the old factory which have been integrated in the new neighborhood and also some of the new garden walls have been done in the old uh, in the old factory style with those red bricks so yeah uh, don't be surprised if you see old walls around here despite the fact that the neighborhood has been uh, constructed I think during the last 15 years so everything we'll see here has been planted during the last 15 years and also reflects the fashion of the last 15 years so let's see if we can find enough food to sustain ourselves here. Well, the first thing, the, those little red ornamental apples, they are basically the staple of German urban foraging. You find them everywhere. They've been planted for decades. They're fruiting reliably, fruiting a lot. If there is no harsh frost, the, the fruits are hanging on the trees till early spring. This year we already had some light frost, but they can survive light frost, no problem. Well, here's some blue Lonicera, but I don't think it's one of the edible ones. I'm pretty sure it's poisonous. Ligustrum, also poisonous. Uh, those ornamental roses, the rosehips are good for nothing. I would consider them like the lowest quality survival food. Here is a strange apple. Oh, look at it. This is one of the, yeah, this is one of those red ornamental apples. But a sucker from the rootstock, or no, just a, a shoot from the lower part of the stem has grown up. So here we have one of those apples which have big apples on the rootstock. Here is one, and up there there is another one lying. And small apples on the graft. Both are edible. The ornamental ones are not bred for eating, of course, but they are still edible. Oh, here a eucalyptus. Well... Basically, well, at least you can make nice cough medicine out of it, so not a bad thing for November. And they used to freeze back regularly in the 20th century, but now this has been growing for like 10, 15 years without big disturbance. What have we got here? Now let's, let's continue here. Here we have some Virginia creeper or some closely related species. Let's see. Ah, no. It's not the Virginian one, it's the Asian. Well, you can use it, you can use it to produce sugar, but the fruits are, they have too many oxalate needles, you cannot produce them. But when you cut the stems in spring, you can tap the sap and produce sugar. So you can use it for survival, but now is not the best time. Cerzis siliquastrum, the Judas tree, well, the flowers are edible, but not the fruits, unfortunately. But the flowers are very tasty. Another survival plant for spring. Oh, here now we have some good roses. This is the potato rose. Some of the biggest and tastiest rose hips ever. Over there, there is a tufa plant. Could be tufa minima. This is called the nature supermarket, but I don't want to photograph it too, to film it too much because it's in a private garden. But you can use it for survival for a thousand different things. Pretty much all parts are edible, and it also has a lot of technical uses. Here's a more creeper. No, I don't know which one this is, but ah, the leaflet. It seems to have leaflets, so it's some of the. It should. It could be the Virginia creeper. Well, here, some more ornamental apples. They are the size of cherries. They look like cherries, but they're apples, and they taste more or less like apples. Well, here, Acabia, or chocolate wine, in August, and this year even into September, you can get the huge fruits which are filled with the pulp, which sometimes actually even does taste like chocolate, but it provides you a lot of food and a lot of sweet nutrition. Uh, here there is some Vitis vinifera or some other, or some other uh, grapevine variety, but somebody has picked all the fruits. Well, 
somebody seems to be stealing those figs because they have they have put a put up a fence but yeah the figs you can eat them well into november although the quality in november will be horrible the good thing is people like to plant herbs and spices look at that a lot of rosemary i think those this could be curry plant no, this is, I forgot what it is. I think in Bulgaria it was very popular on grapes a couple decades ago. And this is some type of mint or catnip. Well, pretty nice herbs and spices. Let's continue. Funny thing is the uh, the green spaces here are not too big, but still you find a lot of different stuff here. A cherry plum, a feral cherry plum, quite good fruits, usually in June and July, but in some cases they can last into October or November, but no, no fruits on this one. Well, here's some other type of rose hips. Uh, seems to be another one of those. Not too pleasant ones. Still, in a survival situation, I would try to nibble at them. Here is the Lusitanian or Portuguese cherry. The fruits are too bitter, actually. Uh, there are varieties where people eat the seeds instead of the fruits. Quite, quite impressive. And I tried them, the seeds are bitter, but definitely less bitter than the fruits themselves. Well, what have we got here? Some more grapes and raspberries. Oh yeah, there is a pale raspberry variety, yellowish pinkish raspberry variety. And there are fruits hanging there in mid-November. Impressive. Well, here some grapes. This seems to be some better rose hip variety yeah they are nice and soft mm. and tasty yeah good rose hips a little bit late for the grapes this was a moist year so the fruit don't last too long here i saw another fig tree with fruits which are more ripe than the ones which are fenced in. Yeah, those figs, they look more ripe and they also look to be of better quality. Better quality for the late fruits. Doesn't say that the early fruits must be of better quality too. Here another chocolate vine. Uh -huh. A lot of this Portuguese laurel cherry, it used to freeze around here. You, you didn't find it so much until like 10 years ago it started becoming popular. More Virginia creeper. Here an, well, an ornamental cherry tree and behind it, next to the other ornamental cherry tree, is an apple tree, not an ornamental one. So I'm sure you could still find some apples in the hedges underneath this tree. See what we got here, more raspberries. Have we got more fruit? No, those are all either gone or, oh well, here, is, here are still a couple half dried ones. So yeah, until recently you could eat some raspberries here. Hibiscus syriacus, you can eat the flowers and also the fruit couple walnut trees in a survival situation even in mid-November I would try to find walnuts underneath. Here is some sunflower but some ornamental sunflower. Actually it does have a couple seeds but either they are not pollinated or this is not being bred to produce viable seeds. Actually, it seems like there were good big seeds in here. Ah, here are a couple more. Yeah, they, they seem to be hard. Small for sunflower seeds, but... Yeah, actually, there is something inside. They are too small, but... Yeah, 
Yeah, they are sunflower seeds and they're just a little bit small, but I guess some of them might have been bigger, not as big as commercial sunflower seeds, but still okay. Behind the walnuts there are a couple of hazelnuts. Here are a couple more figs. You can still find some edible edible dish fruits on the figs, like in November they are starting getting borderline and this time they were already not very good in mid-October. Here uh, an apricot tree, an apple tree, some horse chestnut, unfortunately not with edible fruit. Mm. What have we got here? Nothing new this way, another grapevine, another chocolate vine, both already out of season. Let's go this way. There should still be some solanum fruits around here. I mean, we already had the first light frost, but here in the city, they are usually not harsh enough to kill the solanum plants, even if they kill a couple leaves. No. This unfortunately is ligustrum, not solano, although this should be a good place for solanum, but I don't see it right now. Well, here's some red currant, but the fruits are already kind of gone. So, yeah, red currant is an early summer fruit. Ah, I think this should be the curry plant, ah, or the muggy plant. Well, at least everything will taste very, everything you forage will taste very umami if you eat it with this stuff. Cherry tree, some orna, no, some, um, some blackberry cultivar, some spineless blackberry cultivar with unripe fruits. If we don't get a lot more frost, they might get ripe. Now, ah, here are the ornamental quince or flowering quince. Well, it's called ornamental quince, but the fruit are actually edible. Nice and sour, quite tasty. A good find. More ornamental apples here. Here, an ornamental rose. Well, the rose hips of this one are not only hard, but also small, but you could eat the big flowers. They are nice and tender and quite tasty and aromatic. More chocolate wine ahead. Cherry plum, oh, all of them out of season. Here are some figs, as I said, in mid-November, they are just, you can just consider them survival food, nothing more. Some Lonitsara, but not one of the edible ones. Most Lonitsara are uh, non-edible. Funny, I saw, I saw nice edible Zolanum fruit here on the way here, but, huh. Well, of course, you could eat the dandelion, also it, although it's very bitter. It's not one of my favorites. Yeah, so for now I've been showing you basically only planted ornamental stuff. But uh, here is a, here is a um, cornel cherry right next to some apple without apples and a couple cherry plums. Cornel cherry, ah, here is another one, it's not closely related to the normal cherry, but we call pretty much everything with black, uh, with our small reddish fruits cherry. Here is some Armenian bramble or Armenian blackberry, an old, uh, hundred year old fruit shrub. No fruits right now, but you could basically make a tea out of the leaves. Here are the common European yew. If you know how to eat it, you can eat the tasty fruits, but if you eat the seeds or the leaves or any other part, you die. It's not just toxic, it's deadly. A hawthorn, though sometimes hang full of fruit till spring. I don't know what happened this year. There are still a lot of peduncles on the plant, but basically no fruit. Yeah, so this is normally quite a reliable staple, although quite good for your heart. Could be too good for your heart, so be careful. But this time, are there a couple fruits hanging on the hot or not too much? Here are some strange apples, cherries, plums and figs. And here are some other currant, all of them out of season. The ornamental rose, eat the flowers, not the fruit. They are not so, the fruit are not so good in this variety some phacelia and some echium. Well, you could eat the greens, I guess, and here are some herbs, thyme and lavender next to them. 
Uh, what else have we got here? Some strange little cherry trees growing here. Huh. I guess somebody tried to sow or plant a lot of cherry trees so that they maybe cut it down and it sprouted from a lot of from a lot of uh, uh, from a lot of uh, suckers. Uh, here hops. Well, you use it to make beer. You can also eat the young shoots in spring, but the fruits are being used to make beer. Here are some other uh, blackberry cultivar, but out of season, unfortunately. Around this time, even if I would find unripe or like reddish blackberry fruits, I would rather harvest them than wait for them to ripen because they might as well not ripen. And even if they ripen, they will not get much sweeter. So. If you're into blackberries, better get the unripe fruits, they are young and crunchy. Well, some Shinopodium lamps quarters, or, or, or is this a triplex, some closely related genus? Well, the fruit could be edible. If you find big enough seeds inside, you could eat them. Question is just, is it worth the trouble in this case? You would have to check, because usually the fruits are too small to bother. Ah, here is another nice thing, the hackberry. I found edible hackberry fruits on those trees here, even in early spring. They seem to have like two generations and the fruits overlap. Yeah, right now it's hanging full of... Oops, uh, pretty ripe blackish fruits. Uh, Let's try them. Not too tasty for hackberries, but okay enough. Here another ornamental apple, this time with yellow fruit. Alright, if you want to do some serious foraging, those <laughs> ornamental apples will be your main staple around here in late autumn. Hmm. Those are not too durable, as I said, sometimes they last well into spring, usually into March, some into April or even May, <coughs> or in extreme cases into June. Those will not even make it into December, I don't know why. Hmm. Hmm. Well, sorry, seems I couldn't find any wild solanum for you. It's still quite present around this time of the year. Ah, what is this? Some other strange ornamental apples, which are already out of season, and it seems that most of them dried before they rotted away. Well, still we have enough ornamental apples still in season and still in good quality. <coughs> Let's see what else you can find here. Cherries, unfortunately out of season. Ah, here are some good rose hips. I think those should be from the rootstock and not from the graft of this rose. I think maybe the graft died and they just kept cultivating the rootstock. No, no solanum to show you. Well, folks, I guess, well, here we have some Stellaria media, quite nice and edible, right next to a, a what is it called, um, this uh, Euphorbiaceae here, Mercurialis, which is toxic. Yeah, right now I don't see a lot of new fruit here. Yeah, so this was basically an example of what you can forage in a modern 21st century Ger <coughs> German neighborhood in mid-November after the first light frost, which didn't change a lot to be honest. <coughs> Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful and November cold city of Heidelberg. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.